Hi, I'm Chris Mutchler, VCDX257 from virtualelephant.com. And in this video, I'm going to be reviewing with you the architecture lifecycle and how to create design decisions within your VCDX certification design documentation. Let's get started. Let's start by talking about the architecture lifecycle. Now this is loosely based off of the VCDX framework as well as the TOGAF Enterprise Architecture Framework. And I use this model as a way to discuss with customers how architectures evolve over time. And it includes four key areas, architecture vision, implementation, operationalization, as well as the maturity assessment. As cloud architects, it's important for us to understand how this model is going to relate to our environments. Once we come up with the initial architecture, over the course of its lifetime, it's going to need to be modified. And that is where design decisions, specifically design decisions that we make around new requirements, constraints, or risks, will help us to be able to evolve our architecture designs over time to continue to meet the needs of our business. Design decisions are going to be a critical aspect of your documentation that you submit for your VMware Certified Design Expert application. Now, design decisions are intended to be able to show the panelists why you made the decisions that you made. And so these design decisions should include, at a minimum, five key areas. First, the design decision itself. Second, the justification for that design decision. Third, the implications of the decision. Fourth, the risks that you've identified as a result of making that design decision. And fifth, finally, how you're mitigating those risks within your architecture. As we know, the VCDX certification process itself is an opportunity for us as cloud architects and infrastructure architects to grow our skill set. Now, when you're before the panelists and they're asking you questions, really what they're trying to understand is your thought process behind the design decisions that you've made. That's why including at a minimum those five key categories are going to help you to be able to articulate to the panelists how you came to the decisions that you made. So when we think about the justification, right, we want to be able to show why did we make the decision that we did? What other alternatives did we maybe consider? What impact does this decision have on what we've done? You want to be able to describe, describe the technical reasons for the design decision that you've made. Now, you're going to be able to show here as well what requirements that you achieved by making this design decision, as well as what constraints may have impacted your ability to be able to make that design decision. Now, the implication portion of the design decision is an opportunity for you to show the panelists that you understand the impact that the design decision that you've made is going to have on the overall environment. For example, if you're trying to leverage vSAN ESA technology with vSphere 8, that is going to have impact on the physical network that you're going to need to be able to support that new technology. Being able to document then those new requirements that you've thus created by making this design decision helps you to understand the implications that you've made within your own environment. And this is another way for you to be able to show mastery to the VCDX panelists that you have this same, you have this high level of understanding of everything that you're doing from an architecture perspective within your design. Now, taking things a step further from just those five minimal categories that I recommend that you include within your VCDX design documentation, you can also upskill yourself and be able to show additional mastery to the panelists by including things like operational impact for your design decisions. Perhaps now this design decision is going to require you to monitor something new or create new alerts and thresholds for those alerts to be able to allow this design decision to both be implemented and operationalized within your organizations. 
Now, being able to understand all of these things and being able to show through these design decisions and how you document it within your design reference architecture or design documentation is going to be an important thing for you to be able to show not just your employer, your organizations when you're designing something, or perhaps your customers if you're in a consulting role, but it will also help you as an architect be able to think through long-term more of the second and third level implications of these design decisions that you're making within these environments. And this all relates back to the architecture life cycle. Part of that life cycle that you saw was the maturity assessment. And really what the maturity assessment is about is you, through your design decisions, being able to go back and look to see what is working well, what isn't maybe working well, and what can be improved within your environments. And then leveraging design decisions to be able to document those changes as you evolve your architecture. One last key area I would recommend you consider as you're documenting your architecture design, both whether it's for the certification itself or just for your organization or customer that you're working for, is also to list out the alternatives that you might have considered as part of this design decision. Now you might ask, why should I document the alternatives considered? Well, think of it from an organizational perspective. If you are a consulting architect and you provide a document for a customer to then go and implement, there may be a time down the road where they need to make a decision to change something because of either a security vulnerability, a incident that caused a severe outage within their organization, or just a change of their business use case or requirements. Now, if they have these alternatives that you consider to be able to go back and historically look on, they might be able to understand like, oh, this alternative was considered at the time, but now that our requirements have changed, maybe this is a direction that we want to go in. Now, from an organization perspective, if you're working on an architecture team within a company, Again, this might also be impressive or important for new architects that you bring within the team to give them an opportunity to go back and review or read through the design decisions that you've already made within your environments so that they can get more context as to why certain decisions were made. In this video, I highlighted the architecture lifecycle framework as well as design decisions and how they relate to the VMware Certified Design Expert certification and what key areas I recommend you include inside of your design documentation for both the certification itself and any reference architectures that you write as an architect. I want to also recommend to you as aspiring VCDX certification holders or cloud architects just looking to get better to actually go out and purchase a book called IT Architect, Foundation in the Art of Infrastructure Design. Now, this book was a reference material that I leveraged incredibly often when I was going through the certification process to earn my VCDX. And this book was written by some of the earliest VCDX certification holders. And it is a great way for you to be able to understand the VCDX framework, understand how to document things for the certification itself, as well as to be able to see how they recommend uh, documenting the design decisions. Now, I based my own design decision documentation that I used in my certification packet from this book, and I'll provide a link below to where I've documented that on virtualelephant.com, as well as the template that I created when I was working on the VMware Private Cloud architecture team that we used for all design decisions for running environments. I hope that you found this video useful. Please consider liking and commenting below and letting me know what you thought and if there are other VCDX tips that you're looking for as you're going through the process, please reach out to me on Twitter. And also, subscribe. Let me know what you thought. I look forward to talking to you next time.